Whoa, what? That's insane. <laughs> Hello, I'm King Alex, and today I will be looking at the Master Blacksmith in Good Game Empire. But first, according to YouTube statistics, only 16% of you watching are actually subscribed. So if you're not, then get on with it. Yes, get on with it! Get on with it! The Master Blacksmith was added in October of 2019, replacing the Apprentice Blacksmith, and can be accessed from outside of your main castle. The tent becomes available at level 50, but all of its products become available at level 60 and up. With the introduction of the Master Blacksmith came the addition of two new currencies, gold pieces and silver pieces. Each has its own tab and can buy many different rewards, which we will go over soon. But first, I will show you how to get gold and silver. Starting at around level 40, the rewards you get participating in the events change from small amounts of troops, tools, and equipments to gold and silver. I remember being disappointed as I thought I was receiving worse rewards, however, getting gold and silver instead allows you to choose your own rewards in a way. This is much more helpful as you can buy whatever you need and save for things later on. The monthly seasonal event also gives gold the rarer currency of the two instead of other gifts, troops, and equipment sets. The 2020 August update changed the Master Blacksmith dramatically as well as changed the rewards from the Nobility Contest. The first three rewards give large amounts of silver, so after only one glory hit, for example, you can get 1,500 silver pieces. If you are one of the top 100, you can get silver and gold, and the first place reward gives 4,000 gold pieces and 1,250 silver pieces. With all of this gold and silver, you can buy lots of rewards. In the August update, many more rewards were added. Bigger time skips, better tools, insane fusion source decorations, and more decoration catalysts. However, what makes the Master Blacksmith the most overpowered is the horsetail standards, Bearmond carts, samurai chests, and con chests, costing only 17 silver and having an unlimited stock. Previously, I would buy all of the hero and foreign invader banners every time the blacksmith would restock, which is every seven days. But now I can buy way more horsetail standards, which are better and cheaper than the other banners. In my opinion, this was a very good improvement as it really levels out the playing field between Ruby and non-Ruby players. The other items I would recommend taking advantage of would be the VIP points and time. I occasionally buy event ladders and rams, but I get most of them from my alliance. This brings us to the troops. Being able to buy ruby troops allows you to continuously attack NPCs and also allows you to defend against a PvP attack. Being able to buy a total of 4,000 ruby defenders in a matter of seconds can completely change the outcome of a battle. There is really no point in buying gold pieces, but the rare build item materials can come in handy. I also buy some 30 minute time skips, material sacks, and occasionally some decoration dust. The gold pieces tab sells much more expensive but rare items. You can buy a lot of look items for your buildings, silver star relic equipment, and relic build items. However, before the August update, gold was used to buy mainly unique equipment. You can buy full sets including the Relics of the Royal Warriors set, Treasures of the Elephant Cult set, the Woodland Nymphs set, the Emerald Legends set, Everwinter Soldier, and Everwinter Imps sets, and many more. I have purchased the whole Phoenix Knight set because it is a good NPC commander. I would not recommend getting the Shadow Sorcerer or Apprentice Summoner sets here because you can get them during the Shapeshifter event. I would also not recommend buying any building look items as they do not help you progress in the game and only give a 20 public order bonus. Now if you're going to buy a full unique set, buy it in a pack here. You will have to save up your gold pieces for a while, but it ends up being cheaper to buy everything at once. 
This brings us to the most expensive item available, the military district. Granted, this is the best item for sale by a long ways, as it can save an incredible amount of space, I still think it is a little overpriced. Under that are some new items. These Sundial of the Cunnings are temporary look items for your commanders that last 12 hours and give additional waves increased flank and center limits. I'm not quite sure why you would need these unless you were leading a server war. Continuing, there are goddesses of nature with different public order and might points, and then there are the odd animal gardens. What is that? At the bottom, there are things you can buy for silver, so do that instead. And finally, there are affluence tickets. You can only buy three every week for gold pieces, but I don't actually think that they are too overpriced as the Wheel of Affluence is insane. Well. We took a look at everything that has to do with the Master Blacksmith, and if you stuck around to the end, you are a legend because this is one of my longer and more boring videos. If you have a video suggestion, comment down below and subscribe for more exciting content. Goodbye.